The second test design technique we're going to look at is boundary value analysis. A good way to motivate is, this is to look at the most expensive software bug in history, and that is probably the Ariana 5 crash, where a rocket in total worth of about $850 million exploded because of a software bug. What happened is what that a um, integer overflow happened and then suddenly the rocket thought it had to fly back home and then because of the stress and trying to make a sharp turn the rocket exploded. You are welcome to look at the Wikipedia article and the YouTube video the links are given on this page. The point is what happened is that a certain value was hitting a boundary and then going over the boundary was uh, creating a big catastrophic defect. What's behind this, and it's in a famous example, but that it's a general thing that programming errors often happen at the boundaries of value domains or implementation logic. For instance, at the edges of allowed value ranges. In the previous case, it was the integer range, but for instance, the typical more important ones are equivalence classes. Or even things like implementation logic. So, for instance, an empty list, uh, a fall through on a loop, um, things like where the first or last item in a table is handled and so forth. So typically boundary cases in program logic are the most error prone of all places. And so boundary values analysis considers the boundary of value ranges on input variables and, and their values. And if you look at this little graphic here on the right you can see what this means. If you have an equivalence class the upper bound and lower bound define the range of the allowed values. And so since the boundaries are very error prone, you've got to test those. And to make sure that the upper bound plus one and minus one, if this is an integer case, are not included, you have to test those as well to ha make sure that they are handled properly. So for instance, if we come back to this uh, application insurance, this insurance application handling system with the age field, we had the age ranges of 18 to 30, 31 to 50, and so forth. Well, if you want to consider boundary values, you don't want to just pick an inside value, but also something like boundary values. So what you would do is you would pick the boundaries on purpose, 18 and 30, 31 and 50, and so forth, and then also some illegal values. Now, if you look at what happens here is that instead of one middle value in the equivalence class, you take both boundaries and then also the outside boundaries. Now the outside boundaries may be the beginning of a next equivalence class if they are bound side by side basically the equivalence class and that's okay. But for instance to check the illegal value here above 65 you want to have 66. So this way you make sure that all the boundaries of definition domains and equivalence classes are handled correctly. And this is already pretty much all there is to it to the boundary value analysis. So instead of having a single representative of an equivalence class you take two and that's the boundary values plus the outside values of the equivalence classes. Now some of those equivalence classes or boundary values that you find are illegal values that must also be tested however to see that the program behaves correctly and reacts gracefully if for instance this is error message uh, is supposed to come or um, that something defined is supposed to happen and you don't get crashes. So these are negative tests that are considered standard part of functional testing. You need to make sure that the program behaves correctly here and you find typically also a lot of erroneous behavior in programs if you focus on these things. So basically it's saying that pick the outside, pick the boundary values of equivalence classes, then you have two legal representatives and pick the boundary, the illegal boundaries right next to it to make sure that the program behaves correctly at this point as well. One important point and a key empirical observation is that most error handling it depends on only one input parameter. So if you think about what can go wrong if you enter data, it's typically that for instance an integer expected you try to enter a text or vice versa, you um, do those things that are, or in the age example, for instance, you try to enter a negative age for a person, things like that. So most error handling cases depend on only one input parameter. Some are depending on two, and we'll come to those later. But since this is the case, in the whole process of testing, the negative tests 
are done at this point now that you look at the illegal values coming out of the boundary value analysis you write test cases for those and then when you're done with this you can focus on only positive functional behavior for the multi-parameter interactions so for now we will assume that all the negative values have been tested the whole program behaves correctly and then we can move on to test functional correctness for multiple parameters and what this program is supposed to be doing then so so far we have looked at individual parameters first equivalence classing and then boundary values to yield in the values or representatives that we will put into testing next we'll look at how to put those values into context and put them together